Boys and girls, what's good with you? It is your boy BQ. This is the Impact Lounge. We are an Impact Wrestling centric channel here on YouTube if it's your first time swinging by. So the news came out. A lot of names were released from WWE today. Being that this is an Impact Wrestling channel, I'm going to go over the names first. We're former Impact talents. And I'm actually going to go over, I'm going to go down this entire list and tell you who I think has a chance to end up in Impact Wrestling or where I think that wrestler actually will end up going. So the big name on the list for us as fans of Impact and TNA is, of course, AC3, Ethan Carter III. He was you know, one of the best heels in wrestling for a while and uh, was just really the hottest part about Impact Wrestling. And then, you know, the natural progression happened over to Babyface, and they had a really difficult time with how to use him. But he did main event against Bobby Lashley at Bound for Glory. This was a match that he should have won. This was for the world title. When he did not win that match, this, this was just really bad booking on Impact's part. They didn't know what to do with him from there. He was at his babyface peak at that point. He should have won the title to be an EC three-time champion. When that didn't happen, it was very difficult for them to book him going forward. Most people want to see EC3 come home. I'm actually going to make a pretty bold prediction here that I think he's going to end up in the NWA. I do not think... I want him to come back to Impact. Let me let me make that very, very clear. I think he's going to end up in the NWA, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm not going to get as in-depth with on the, everyone else here, but you know the main focus of this video is going to be on EC3. Let me tell you why I think that. If you look at the way NWA was put together, Billy Corgan brought over a lot of guys you could tell he was really, really high on during his time with TNA. You, you can see that looking at the roster. And he's done really good things with all those talents he's brought over. He's made Nick Aldis look like a million bucks. Who he's not he's not one of not one of the names I'm talking about. I'm talking more the Eli Drakes, the James Storms, you know, the Caleb Conleys, guys like that. Um, he's made Nick Aldis look like a million bucks. He's made Eli Drake look like a million bucks. James Storm, you know, even Aaron. We knew it was Aaron Rex in Impact. Uh, you know, Aaron Stevens. I mean, he was such a train wreck when he was in in TNA, and you know, even though he's still kind of doing the comedy thing, it's working for him now. So. I think that uh, Billy Corgan makes a pretty big pitch to, to get EC3 to come over to the NWA because, you know, he doesn't have a good working relationship with Impact Wrestling right now. And to my knowledge, EC3 doesn't have the best relationship with current Impact Wrestling management. He did, from what I was told, he didn't like the way when they came in, they basically cleared house and said, hey, the way you guys were doing this, isn't good it's no longer good we're going to do it our way now and you know you saw ec3 eat a, eat a lot of pins at that time so um i actually going to make a pretty bold prediction that he goes to the nwa so i'm going to go down the rest of this list as i said i'm not going to go real into depth on everybody uh, if it's your first time here though make sure you hit that subscribe button eric young's the next one on the list he's one that i think is really really likely to return to impact because he didn't gain any real momentum in his time with NW, um, excuse me, with WWE, you know, I guess he was kind of getting there with NXT, but he never really gained any kind of momentum. He's not really a bigger household name than he was prior prior to going there. I could see him coming back to Impact on a, on a pretty big money deal and uh, probably, you know, doing a classic winning the title on his first night type of thing. But I could see him, you know, immediately in the world title picture. He's not going to get that anywhere else. So um, I'm going Impact Wrestling for Eric Young. Kurt Angle's the next name on the list. You know, obviously he had his best matches in TNA. He's not an active competitor anymore. And I don't know that he really returns the wrestling period. You know, uh, you could easily see him, you know, go to the AEW because they found a lot of roles for non-wrestlers over there. Um, he, Kurt has talked about coming back to Impact Wrestling one day in an off-screen role, ownership role, management role, something like that. You know, he's he briefly kind of talked about those things in the past. So, I'm going to be non-committal on Kurt Angle because it, it's possible he just doesn't return to a company at all. But uh, I could easily see Impact or AEW in the mix there. Uh, we know him as Rockstar Spud. He was Drake Maverick in, in WWE. I always thought that was a really weird signing from them. 
And but from what I understood, he played his role quite well doing the GM thing and whatever they had him do after that. Uh, I, th- I believe at a house show they even flirted with him managing EC3, and people were really excited about that. Did it did it uh, come to fruition? But uh, Rockstar Spud, I'm not going to call him Drake Maverick, even though I just did. I think he is more likely to return to Impact Wrestling. Uh, we know him as Mike Bennett. We could easily Mike Bennett. Now he actually asked for his release. He was doing really really good things his year with TNA. Uh, he was really one of my favorite talents, and I thought that he had a legit world title run in him. And I said at the time that he went to WWE, I said, he's not ready. You know, at that time, guys didn't go straight to the main roster unless you were AJ Styles, if you were coming in from another company. I didn't think Mike Bennett was ready. Neither did WWE because they named him after his wife when he got there. But uh, he has a lot of different ways he could go. He could go back to Japan, which I don't think he will because I think he's been in the States long enough now. Um we obviously you could see him go back to Ring of Honor, and you could see him come back to Impact Wrestling, and you know they they I think they need another good heel in that top slot. So I'm actually um, I'm gonna you probably want me to give a definite answer, but <laughs> this one's gonna be a tie between Ring and uh, Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling. Um, I think he has interest in continuing to work with Japan, so that's why I'm a, you know what I'm gonna go Ring of Honor on that one. I think he still has interest in working with Japan. Uh, that might not happen so much on an Impact Wrestling contract, so I'm going to set a ring of honor. Uh, same for Maria Kanellis. Uh, Zack Ryder and Kerr Hawkins. You know, obviously they, they came in as a tag team years ago as the Major Brothers. Uh, Zack Ryder, you know, reached much higher status than um, that of his uh, partner, Kerr Hawkins. But these are both, um, what do you want to call them, cult names, you know? Uh, especially Zack Ryder, but really both of them become really cult names in wrestling. So uh, I actually uh, penciling a- AEW for both of them. Um, not as a tag team, though. They really can't afford to bring that many more tag teams over. So I I do see that. Um, I could see... I could see impact for Kurt Hawkins. Uh, I don't see it for Zack Ryder because of the way his wife left the company. Now... Even speaking to her personally a couple of years ago, she did go out on good terms and made sure she went on good terms. But that doesn't necessarily mean the company sees it the same way. Lou Gallows and Carl Anderson. Um, I'm going to... The easy, the easy money is actually uh, AEW with these guys. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and say these guys go to Ring of Honor. Because I think they also would have a lot of interest in wrestling back in Japan. And I think that's the best relationship right there is with Ring of Honor. So I'm actually going to say Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson go there because the Revival is likely headed to AEW. Um, I'm sorry, Impact has no chance of signing the Revival, guys. I know you're going to hate me for saying that, but I'm, I'm being honest. Let's be honest here. They have no chance of those guys. They're probably going to get a really big deal from AEW. I don't see them also bringing in Luke Gallows and uh, Carl Anderson. Eric Rowan was one of the guys on here. This is this is a really weird one. He never really re- you know reached that popularity of like a uh, I forgot his partner's name um, that went to AEW. I'm sorry, just escaping me at the moment. He never really received you know reached that level of popularity. He got hurt a few times. Uh, I don't know that he goes anywhere, but I'm actually going to pencil him <laughs> him into Impact. I think this is kind of a classic Impact signing. Um, he would have to be completely repackaged, uh, shave the, you know, shave his head totally, shave the beard, uh, you know, probably in a bodyguard role type of thing. But as a completely repackaged wrestler, I'm going to put him uh, an impact. Heath Slater, another cult guy who you would imagine, who would think would fit really good in with the AEW crowd. But um, even though I threw I threw a couple cult guys at AEW earlier and Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, I'm actually going to say East Slater is more likely to end up in Impact Wrestling, and he could uh, they're, they're in they're in need of some top baby faces right now under Tessa Blanchard and Eddie Edwards. Um, on the heels, they're kind of good with Moose and um, Sammy Callahan and uh, Michael Elgin. You know what I mean? But I think they could use another big baby face, and if he were to return. Um, I think he could. He wouldn't be the third baby face by any stretch of the imagination, but I think he would actually get a decent impact wrestling push. 
Sarah Logan is the next one. She was Crazy Mary on the Indies, and I loved me some Crazy Mary. She was uh, one of my favorites on the Indies. I was super disappointed when she went to the WWE, as I am with most people that go to NXT or whatever, because I basically tell myself, okay, I'm never going to see them wrestle again. So Sarah Logan here, if she repackages herself, I would see her... Um, I, I'm never going to assume a woman goes to the AEW because their women's division, even though it's talented, I don't think it's being presented very well. So uh, if she repackages herself, I think she would go to Impact Wrestling. If she goes back to the Crazy Mary character, I would say she goes to Ring of Honor. No Way Jose is the next name on the list. I don't care for him at all. I never have. Around the time he debuted for NXT, that's when I started losing interest in NXT. I, I, I've never liked him. Um, I'm just, I, I'm not even, <laughs> I dislike him so much, I'm not even going to give him a destination. I, I don't, I don't know who would sign him. I'm not saying he's bad, I just, I see nothing in him personally. Um, Aiden English, I don't think he goes anywhere um, as well. I think he wrestles on the indies just like his former tag team partner. Now he has a little bit more name value than him, but I don't see him moving the needle for anybody uh you know i i think i see him going back to the indies and maybe doing a version of their uh, nxt gimmick when he was a tag team with uh, simon gotch leo rush that's a big one on there former former um x division champion you know i i could see him going to the nwa i could see him going to impact wrestling i don't think he go, goes back to ring of honor because me outside looking in i felt like he kind of played Ring of Honor, I don't want to say he played him for fools, but it's like he won that tournament. I forgot what they called it. It was for kind of the up-and-comers. He won that tournament. It was like he did the minimal time there, and then the the minute the opportunity for WWE rolled up, he was out, you know? So I don't think he left Ring of Honor on good terms. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, he would be an excellent addition to Impact Wrestling, but because they have a couple guys I think are similar skill set wise, I think he goes to the NWA. And then Primo and Epico. This is one of my favorite tag teams in the world, mainly because they're Puerto Rican. I'm Puerto Rican. I have been waiting for this day for them to be released from the WWE. I was hoping it was going to happen a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. The day has finally come. And I think that they absolutely come to Impact Wrestling. I'm, I'm, I think that is a lot more possible. Even though they would be great fits in NWA or AW, I think that Impact has to do something about their tag team division. I think they're going to make a big uh, play at the uh, Ascension. But, um, but they do have similarities at Reno Scum, so I don't know. But Primo and Epico, I think, would be... A really excellent babyface addition to the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Division. Then Mike Kyoto was the other one. I believe he's a referee, right? Um, you know, most li- I, if I have to throw an a-, a referee somewhere, I say he goes to AEW because they they like signing you know names over there or creating stars for the referee division, and they're really the only ones focusing on that right now. So sorry if this ran a little bit long for you guys. Uh, let's hope EC3 and Eric Young come home. Some of these other guys, I'd be great with Mike Bennett coming back, um, but I'm just kind of being honest with where I would think a lot of these guys go. But um, let's hope we get some of these guys and, and you know some uh, some real momentum and impact. I really think once Impact is able to sign two or three names at the same time that have a little bit of buzz behind them, we're going to start seeing some momentum in that company. Thanks for swinging by. I am your boy BQ, and I'm out. Peace.